New York Republican Congressman George Santos says he won't run for re-election in 2024. His announcement comes after the release of a House Ethics Committee report that found evidence he, Santos, broke the law. The committee unanimously voted to refer evidence of the congressman's alleged wrongdoing to the Justice Department. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins me now here on the set. Scott, what does the Ethics Committee report say? I've read a few of these reports through the years. I've never seen this kind of blistering, scathing language in this exhaustive a denunciation of a member of Congress. Usually their language is soft. It's ambiguous or gentle. This was not gentle. This was not soft. They didn't just say he acted unethically. They say he stole money. They didn't just say he had misconduct in office. They say he committed fraud. They said what they found paralleled the criminal case against him. And there are two headlines through the afternoon after the report came out. First of all, Santos says he's not running for re-election. He's not going to campaign for office again in 2024. And there's a growing number of his colleagues who did not vote to expel him earlier this month. They said they will now. His days could be numbered. I read in the uh, press release that accompanied the report from the Ethics Committee, Scott, a reference to additional uncharged and unlawful conduct referred to the Department of Justice. Do we have any idea what that is or isn't? Well, some of this parallels the federal indictment. Some of this begs the question, is there going to be an expansion in the indictment? The feds did the Ethics Committee find more, in other words? Did they find more things that the Department of Justice was unaware of? That's a question for the Department of Justice. But here's what we can say paralleled the prosecution. They found that he took campaign money and used it for himself, for some very luxurious things, the type of things that most people don't buy uh, out of their wallets. Um, they also found there was some level of misconduct involving the reports submitted to the Federal Elections Commission, and that he was part of that. You know, in the prosecution, they had said, or he, Santos had said, it was my bookkeepers, it was my campaign staff. His defense lawyers have said it was all his other people who did that. Ethics Committee said they found it was him who had responsibility for those Federal Elections Commission reports. That could differentiate it from the Justice Department prosecution, or maybe it tells the Fed something they already knew. And you've talked to some people uh, who are responsible for putting this report together, yes? It's one of the Democrats, as part of the House Ethics Committee, assigned the task of investigating George Santos. is a former federal prosecutor, Glenn Ivey of Maryland. He spoke about the case and about what he found. Take a listen. What struck you most from what you found? You know, I think it was just how repeated it was. I mean, it was just, it was just so brazen and obvious at some level. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I guess he didn't seem worried about being caught, uh, but, you know, the venality that was there. When does Congress move to expel George Santos? When do they make a second attempt? Could happen. New legislation could pop tomorrow, could pop this weekend. They're not back in town until the week after Thanksgiving. They have to be here to do that. And I'll note the timing. The Ethics Committee did him one courtesy waiting for Congress to leave town just before releasing the report. There are other matters pending before Congress. It appears we are going to get past the shutdown saga, scenarios one, two, three, four, and five, whatever might have played out around Thanksgiving, Christmas. All of that now kicked into January and February. Good news for the country and the markets and everyone who was curious, yes? For a while, the imminence of a government shutdown is starting to be reckoned with on Capitol Hill. They realize that they've just painted themselves into the tightest of corners. They've given themselves the holidays in a few weeks, but the Republicans in the House conference major have said no more of these short-term deals, no more caving to Democrats. The House Speaker told us yesterday he's not cutting any more short-term deals either. Well, the political chemistry hasn't changed whatsoever. Democrats still run the Senate. They're not gonna go for steep cuts or big policy changes. Republicans say the opposite a protracted government shutdown now seems more likely than not. And there was evidence this week, Scott, was there not, that even under the leadership of this new House Republican speaker, the same underlying conflicts prevent the Republican majority from passing individual spending bills? Only it's gotten worse. Not only does he have a faction of House Freedom Caucus members who have defied him the way they defied Kevin McCarthy, but now he's got a problem with the moderates. The New York freshman Republicans blocked a bill because of concerns about Amtrak funding. They had certain concerns with a different bill yesterday. Now you've got a 7-10 split. You've got to navigate. You've got two different pins to knock down with the same throw. That's why January is so rife with danger.
Even good bowlers don't like a 7-10 split. Scott McFarland, thank you very much.